acceptance. Yesterday made 17 years since the day I realized that there was something between me and my husband um, that wasn't sinful, it wasn't lustful, it wasn't um, like your regular teenage romance. It was larger than life. And if you knew Bryce, you know how um, amazing he he was um, and is. And so I've been reflecting on um, all the different stages of grief and I'll talk a little bit more about guilt and bargaining and um, all of those other uh, phases or places where you find yourself emotionally in grief. Um, but I'm feeling a little accepting, um, mixed with a little bit of bargaining um, and a little bit of guilt. And I'll tell you why. So I, um, as I just mentioned, Bryce and I uh, had a college um, founded relationship. And so it, it moved quickly. It was, again, larger than life. It was absolutely amazing um, to have someone in my life to love me that hard, like just all encompassing, um, almost as if the sun rose and set on me um, is how he made me feel. And I've been processing through um, all of the parts of our vows and um, how I showed up for him in the marriage. Um, and I know that um, he loved me. I loved him. I still love him. He still loves me. But there were moments where I know that I could have loved better. Guilt, right? Like, here I am, the one that didn't love as much as he loved me. And I, in fact, told him often that you love me more than I could ever love you. Said that to his face. He was like, I know. <laughs> and I've been processing through why, right? As I'm approaching the guilt and I'm approaching and living through the acceptance and the bargaining I'm trying to figure out why I had a conversation with a couple of people chief among them um, well not chief but number two among them because chief among them would be God but number two my therapist and we've been processing through how relationships look in my family in most black families where the man is seen as the end all be all, right? He is the voice of the family. He's the head of household. We don't move without the man moving. You make his plate at functions. You ensure that he has something to eat, that the house is clean, that whatever he says goes. My marriage was never like that. My marriage to Bryce was a team effort. And we, we called it that, we were Team Jones. Um, through and through, there there were times where I made more, he made less, he made more, I made less, I had to pull back, he had to step in. We were a team in that way. And yet I was taught on purpose, inadvertently, subconsciously, however you wanna look at it, right? Culturally, that I wasn't worth much if I wasn't connected to a man. And I definitely was worth a little bit more now that that man that I was connected to was also a preacher and eventually a pastor. And so this morning I'm reflecting on the verse of the day um, that says, you know, very simple command for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And in my reflection, I've come to realize that 
I couldn't quite as much love Bryce as much as he loved me because I didn't love me. And in his loss, I've been able to really reflect on and unpack some emotions and some parts about myself, some that I love, some that I'm not so quite happy about, some things about me that I'm starting to shed. And I didn't necessarily know how to love myself because I was taught that loving me meant that I had to be quiet. It meant that I couldn't be all of me. It meant that whoever Nia was had to some way be tied into who Bryce was. Bryce was amazing. And this has, this is not by any stretch of the imagination, a dig on him, where he came from, who his people are, none of that. It's not a dig on my family either. They did the best they could with the information that they had. But I didn't know how to be who I was called to be by God because it was so shadowed by paternalism, white supremacy, and this idea that the man had the voice. But all the while, my husband was right there telling me that I was amazing, that I was a rock star every chance that he got. He loved me. And so I can accept and rest and sit in that love from him and ultimately and continually sit right in the center of the love of God. And so I offer that to you today. Love your neighbor, the person that lives in the house with you, that lives next door to you, lives across the street from you, lives in the same zip code, the same city, the same state, the same country, the same world as you love yourself. But if you don't love you, you're never gonna be able to love them. Start with you. And so on this first day of Mental Health Awareness Month, as I am unpacking and unfolding what it means to live on purpose, see what I did there, it's my company, but also my name, Love yourself intentionally and with confidence because everything you need is already inside of you. Have a good day.